my side of the championship in the West. Wing cap and Brian, turn one. Who can make the jump? Brian gets a good initial bite. Alex Davidson makes a stormer. Slots to the inside. That's massive. Oh, oh the slot on massive. the grid. He was stalled on the grid. And has been hit from behind. That's uh and Carl Carl's Weidler. moving, trying to get out of this car quickly. He's out of the car. That's good to see because that has taken a massive hit from behind. The race is red flagged. And it, there's another car involved behind. It's really hard to pick up. It's a Kelly, it's a Kelly car, I think. Yeah, it was a black Commodore by the looks of things. I think it's hard to see. I think it's Todd Kelly's car. He was starting right down the back. We've got a red flag, you just move, you just need to move around through pit lane oh, right, it's, Steve, it's Steve Owen, the VIP Petford's car, he's out of the car, he's okay. But he did start back in the pack, so he would have had quite a bit of speed going by the time he got to Reindler, who was in the mid-pack on the grid. We saw a massive crash like this at Oran Park many years ago with Mark Larkham and Paul Morris on the grid, and by the time you accelerate through and there's a, there's a parked car there, then you, you absolutely can't see it. So it well, stove the back of the car in. Remember that uh, Reindler was 13th on if the we grid. just have the cars uh, stopping at the back of the grid, please, just in the line, just stopping at the back of the grid until we um, was just sort this uh, mess out over. Tim Schenken, race director, and Steve, Steve Owen started position 25. Now, when you consider how many rows and then you look at the damage on Carl's car, you realise what sort of pace Steve had by the time he met the back of the Fairdigham Shed's car. So uh, we're obviously in a race stop situation because of the damage and the danger here. We're going to have a look at a replay to try and unravel what's going on. Look back in the pack. Carl stopped. Oh, oh, man. oh man. And Dave Reynolds pulled out of the way. Owen completely unsighted. He had no chance. He had nowhere to go, did he? And that's just punched straight into the fuel cell. It split the cell. The fuel's been ignited, but there's a whole lot of electrical apparatus in the back of the cars. There's fuel pumps in there. There's power and batteries and things in there. And I, and I don't think I've ever seen anything quite as ferocious on a start line in terms of front to rear impact. That has devastated that car. That, that car will be just about over and out, I'd say. I totally agree. I've never seen an impact as heavy as that on a start line anywhere. Steve Owen, just as, they, as the cars split apart, he had nowhere to go. He wouldn't have even sighted that car. All of a sudden, there'd be a parked car in front of you. Full fuel, 75 litres of the sucrogen bioethanol, and uh, it's just erupted, and both those cars are a mess. But more importantly, the drivers are out of the car. I can see that uh, Carl Reindler's being worked on by Dr. Carl Lee and the medical team from V8 Supercar. And uh, when we saw him departing the car, he clearly was... Uh, distressed and trying to get out of there because of the amount of uh, flame around and uh, there he is going into the back of the ambulance and the crowd a fantastic reaction as they applaud Carl Reindler getting off the track and to the back of the ambulance area we've got to point out also Mark that uh, you know in terms of the safety gear that the drivers are wearing they've got their fireproof underwear fireproof socks gloves balaclavas, helmets, all the gear. There's a lot of apparatus in place in the car and on the driver to ensure that this, when this sort of thing, which happens extremely rarely, does happen, you're as well protected as can be. Oh, I'm wow now. I've got to say, I'm standing down here. Firstly, great to see the guys, uh, well, OK at this stage, but oh, deja vu, mate. I mean, you talked about that incident in 2000. And, and just to reflect, I mean, same thing. You're sitting down low in the car, following the car in front of you. You've got no idea. Whilst we see it in our camera vision, you've got no idea that there's a stationary car up, in, up ahead. I would guess at that speed, probably somewhere between 120 and 150 kilometres an hour at the point of impact. Um, and, and there's really not much you can do about it. I, I, it does say the next generation of car that will pull the, put the fuel cell further forward is a great concept. Um, and uh, roll on, because really these start line incidents, to me, they're one of the last frontiers of real danger in our sport. I totally agree, Larko, and for the car of the future, the fuel cell will be located in front of the rear axle centre line instead of the fuel cell being behind that, which you see that there. As soon as that car was impacted, it immediately burst into flames. As Neil said, an absolutely massive collision. And I reckon you're right, it'd be pretty close to 150k 
when Steve Owen has just run straight with the back of Carl Reinler. And, and uh, spare a thought for Steve Owen because the impact for him and the bite that you get from the seat belts at that point of impact is really significant. So he'll be wounded as well and, you know, winded, it'll hurt. And look at, and this is what I was talking about before. You've got the, the fuel collector, you've got fuel pumps high and low pressure in there. Uh, very often the battery's low and rearward in the car for weight distribution. So you've, you've uh, obviously got fuel and ignition sources separated under normal conditions, but when you have such an enormous impact, clearly the fuel gets away and uh, things get broken. There's, uh, all you need is that uh, arc of a spark and away you go. Yeah, Neil, you, you've got to really commend these, uh, you've got to commend these crews. That, you know, the fireys we see here all year, this is when they come into their own. At the moment, they are just crawling over Carl Reindler's car just to make sure that everything is okay, that there is no chance of a flare-up down there at the moment. But the, the devastation, you, you guys have seen it on the screen and uh, I tell you, to see it firsthand, to see the pressure of that impact when you know the strength of the car and the amount of equipment, as you say, Neil, that's in the back of that car and, and that is just compressed as though you put it in one of those giant steel compressors. You know, the force of impact would have been incredible. It was great to see Carl Reinley get up and walk his way to the ambulance. He's in the best possible medical care. Dr Carl, of course, is one of our top trauma specialists in the country and the fact that Carl is up and about and moving is, A, is a great sign, but B, he is in the best possible care. Uh, the crew's now working to try and clear the track. Remember too, we've got all the other drivers here just, just waiting to get this race underway eventually, but uh, the scene down here is, is quite incredible. The devastation from the impact of those two cars, it's just got to be seen up close to be believed. The, you know, the debris that's around all over the track now, there are parts of plastic, there are there are mirrors, there are wings, there are, are front spoilers. It's, uh, it is quite a sight. Plenty of clean-up required, Mark. Carl Reinler's car, the Fede Kamschitz Commodore, is severely damaged. The good news is that both he and Steve Owen are OK. We'll take a break from Barbagallo. More on 7 in just a moment. Back with the V8 Supercars at Barbagallo Raceway, rolling away from the warm-up lap after a red flag flew. This was the reason why. Carl Reinler stalled on the grid. Steve Owen ploughs into the back of the car. There's fire everywhere, but Mark Beretta can give us an update on Carl Reindler. The good news from Carl Reindler's point of view, and it is good news out of the medical centre, is that Carl has been uh, taken to hospital, local hospital. Uh, he's been given the best medical care at the moment. The, the teams here were fantastic. Uh, Dr Carl Lee, who's the regular doctor here, and, and one of the best accident and emergency doctors in Australia, was straight on the scene. Uh, superficial burns to the arms, the forearms, the hands of uh, both limbs of uh, Carl Reindler, and also to the face. Uh, but he is fine. I spoke to him as he left the medical centre. He explained what happened, uh, how he stalled on the grid, and from there it was just a wall of flame inside the cabin. And he did what he's been instinctively trained to do, and that was to try and get out as quickly as he could. Fortunately, he did that as quickly as could be done. He was out on the ground, he was attended to by crews, and uh, everything was taken care of as, as quickly and as professionally and as best as could be. So he is on his way to uh, the hospital at the moment under police escort. But Steve Owen, obviously involved in that incident as well, is out of the medical centre. And Steve, just talk. Talk us through what, what you saw in front of you as that all unfolded. The guys in front were banging wheels off the start line and then the car on the inside speared off to the grass so I uh, immediately thought that it was because they'd banged wheels that he'd gone off to the grass but obviously he'd seen the incident before I could so I was just blindsided by the time the cars opened up I was just halfway through third gear and I was right, be, right square on behind Carl so I barely even got to the brake by the time I hit him. Uh, but it was good you were able to make it out of the car all OK? Well, I couldn't get out initially because of the flames on either side. I opened both doors and there was fire there. And uh, I was basically just sitting there and, and waiting for the officials to, to put it out and they did a great job. So it's, you can't say enough about them because, you know, without, without those guys putting the fire out, I couldn't have got out of the car. Steve, we'll let you go and rest up. Thank you very much. Well, obviously, frightening images that we saw at the start of that first start for race number eight with all the damage to Carl's car and also to Steve Owen's car. To get more of the story, let's go back down to the pit lane with Mark Larkin to have a look at the Fair Dinkum Shed's entry. OK, well, I can tell you, I've never seen fuel and fire come into the cockpit of a V8 supercar as it has in this instance. Let's just have a look inside the cockpit here. Now, you can see, look at Carl's seat. The flame has come right through and burnt all of his seat. Look at here's his gear stick. 
his drink tubes and what have you. The remarkable thing on the roof here, all the paint is burnt there. It's burnt everything here. Now, what's probably going to render this car useless over time? If you can see in here, there's a crisscross of roll tube there. That's all kinked. It's kinked here, I can tell you, and kinked down in there. Now, that means that that car is probably... I would suggest won't be repaired. Now, if we come round to the back of the car, what's quite remarkable is that the rear window stayed intact, which is great. However, because that's usually where the fuel will go through. Fuel cell normally sits about here. You can see there's the bladder. It's got a bladder and it's surrounded by an aluminium box. Now, that aluminium box is peeled under. There's the foam that sits inside the fuel cell. There are the fuel pumps that sit inside the fuel cell, fully exposed. Now, normally, there's this steel wall here. Well, you can see it there. That's your firewall. So that stops it going through. But what's happened in this instance? Look, that's popped open from the impact, and that's let the fuel go into the cockpit, and that's what's done the damage. Just extraordinary to see those images. This is the replay of the start from the starters roster, and the car stalled Simon out. The yellow flags are flying, but that is one of the most frightening, if not the most frightening thing that I've ever seen on a start line. But, Scafi, I've got to say, the Western Australian Sporting Car Club volunteers did a brilliant job intervening, as did all the safety gear in the car and the clothing that the drivers are wearing. Oh, no doubt. You have a look at the, where our safety has come from. The, the Coulthard crash at Bathurst, this sort of crash, and Carl Ryder, our guys are already on site there with him. The safety car's pulled up. Carl, Dr. Carl Lee is there running. All the other teams have jumped the fence there to help put that out, Neil. I mean, it's an extraordinary action. And I, I mean, very, very proud that you could have an accident like that and really no one seriously hurt. Had a quick word to Brad Jones as well. And he does have a caged shell back at the workshop, but now they have the enormous stress of trying to turn around the remnants of that car in preparation for our next event, which will be in northeastern Victoria at Winton. That's going to be a massive job for those guys. And right, we've gone back and found some images out of the cars of both Steve Owen and Carl Reindler from that initial start for race eight earlier on. It's what's described as the Teague division. Oh. That is what it looked like. Can you believe that? This is Rindler now. Oh. Oh. So the first image, of course, was Steve Owen. And the second image we showed you there was Carl Rindler's car. And this is the camera that's used. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, man. It's from Steve Owen's team VIP car. And these are the images of the cameras that are used to record driving infringements and also have data loggers attached to them. So we're able to download that from the cars just to be able to show it to you today before we went off air, we thought it was